welcome to another episode of Hello Tetso. I am your host, Alopo, from the Mass Communication Department, a second semester student. Today, we have a very special guest here with us today. Um, and today's episode, we will be talking about the history department and some of the side hustles that are very special gave us during his free time. So, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, guys. I am Yim Tiong Longkumer from the Department of History. I'm in my sixth semester. And yeah, thank you for having me today. And I hope we can have a productive conversation. Thank you very much, Yim Tiong, for being here with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's We're really looking forward to record this episode because we've heard so much about you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've been the department stopper since the first semester and also very active in the drama club. Mm -hmm. And your drama club has uh, uploaded a video on the college channel, so yes. you guys can check it out about what drama club does and also a little bit, a little glimpse of the drama club activities. And not just the department topper, but also the NILIT course topper. Which uh, and a computer course which is uh, provided to the Tetsu, uh, Tetsu students. Mm -hmm. So congratulations! Before we dive deeper into your uh, side hustle as a student, can you please tell us uh, more about your course and like um, the scopes one can expect from the history department and um, why you chose this department specifically? Okay. Uh, yeah. So history. Uh, let me just start off with why I took up history. Uh, the thing is, um, she out here in Nagaland, uh, Naga history is not taught at a very, like, um, it's not, we're not very well versed with it, even during the high school or high secondary. And we just get a very short uh, exposure to Naga history in the form of GK. And so that thirst to you know get to know more about um, Naga history is what drove me to um, take up history as a mm -hmm. subject and also the other reason was that uh, I want to prepare for competitive exams and so that would help me as well and well the thing is history as you know um, a degree can open up I think a lot of career opportunities. Well, the most common would be, you know, becoming a lecturer, mm -hmm. and then like as I am striving for a NPS uh, competitive examination, a civil servant. You know, it really helps. And then there are many other opportunities, especially these days with uh, the growing social media platforms, YouTube and all that. Uh, there are YouTubers who want to, you know, maybe publish a video regarding a place or an event that took place. So, in order to find content for that, they mm -hmm. would require to, you know, um, what, uh, <coughs> seek help from a historian, perhaps, you know. And historians would be able to give better data mm -hmm. and, like, records, right, accurate, mm -hmm. since we strive to, you know, uh, record history. I think, um, how should I, uh, and just to clarify, our host here has said a lot of good things about me, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have not been consistently been the topper of my department. There are other students who have been doing well as well. Uh, so, yeah, they, we have a very competitive uh, group of people in my department, and that's really good about the, you know, department. <laughs> Okay, thank you for the clarification and shout out to the history department. <laughs> yeah, so like uh, our guest here is very well known among the college mates regarding your uh, craftsmanship in uh, the wood craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. And your skills have been displayed in so many various occasions, even in the drama club, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, with the, obviously with the help of the drama club members, but as a guider. <laughs> So like, uh, it's history and like your uh, wood craftsmanship. Is it related or like, is it a different different interest of yours? Uh, it is somehow related, and 
somehow not related, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because like, but the thing is, um, woodcrafting is actually very deeply rooted in Naga mm -hmm. culture as well, no? Because yes. we've been Nagas, like, since time immemorial, we've been doing a lot of woodcrafts. Mm -hmm. We've been crafting log drums, you know, we've been building our own houses, then they, like, craft this motifs and we have an example out here as well our good old Mithun so we Nagas are very good at woodcrafting and I guess like I'm hoping that I have also inherited a little bit of those talents so and it's just recently that I started uh, exploring so yeah in a way it is um, it's connected to history and also it was my parents my aunts and uncles that somehow, you know, uh, helped me um, take up woodcrafting. Can you um, <coughs> tell us a little bit more about, like, your hobby? Like, when did you ex start this woodcrafting, the interest in the woodcrafting, and then, like, what really, what's your muse and your inspiration to work on the crafts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I started woodcrafting just a few years back. It's not that long that I started this um, hobby of mine. And I should say it start, uh, started off at home because like um, my aunts and uncles, they used to do a lot of um, furniture, wood furniture at home. Like they made their own tables and shelves and all that. So somehow I was caught up in their, you know, um, crafting, even though I did not want to help them out at times. But then slowly, slowly it just got into me and then uh, right after that I started, you know, just playing around with wood. That sounds weird. Uh, but uh, eventually I got into wood carving and slowly I started making small, small stuff like hairpins. Um, and then I graduated into making wooden combs and yeah, uh, many more items. Um, I take inspiration, if I should say, from a lot of sources and mostly Pinterest. Uh, I have not delved into Naga carpentry or like woodworking that much, but I am really interested and maybe if I do get the chance, I will try to, you know, expand my um, hobby into that sphere as well. Good to know, good to know. So the woodcraftman, the woodcraftmanship is like really interesting because um, as a naga, is like no, just not just as a naga, but like as a citizen mm -hmm. from Nagaland, it's really weird to find woodworks that is being done in naga itself, like the naga products, the mm -hmm. wooden naga products that's crafted by the nagas. Mm -hmm. So like, it's what intrigued me or like what interested me to have you in this podcast is to like among this. The dying patients among the youths, like they are not really interested in this woodcrafts anymore. And then the legacy of this woodcraftsmanship among the Nagas keeps vanishing, yeah, it's it decaying. So like can you like you know influence the aspiring those ones who have this tiny little bit of hope that like they have interest in woodcraftsmanship? Like what will you what do you wanna say to them to encourage them to keep doing that? Hmm. And what would you, do you have anything to say, like, do you have anything for the viewer, viewers and the listeners to, like, you know, sponsorship, yeah, <laughs> pave the way for woodcraftmanship in Nagaland? True, true, true. <laughs> mm, okay, that that's actually a nice question. Uh, I haven't thought about it yet, but the thing is, woodcrafting, more than being a hobby or you know, a livelihood for some people. It's it's art. No? Mm. It's about creating things. And it, there may be... Many people have different, uh, you know, agendas for making wood crafting or wood carving. But the thing is, uh, I like making wood crafts because I am able to express myself. Mm. And I like making things for people as well. I like, you know, just making things, spending the time and effort, and then... When you gift it to someone, you see that, you know, that happiness mm -hmm. and that, how should I say this? Um, that makes you happy. Yeah, it makes you happy. Like, 
there is satisfaction in seeing mm -hmm. people happy and it's also that is also that craft that you make it's also a legacy of mm -hmm. what you've done right and as our forefathers they've made log drums and all that that is their legacy mm -hmm. and it, that is like the memory that is the heritage that they've passed down to us so um i guess it's important that uh we try to revive this dying uh, art as well as encouraging the youths. Oh, even I don't know where to start with that. The big shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I think the thing is um, a lot of people from outside, they're very interested in mm -hmm. knowing about mm -hmm. Naga culture. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I guess that will also open up a lot of uh, career opportunities mm -hmm. for a lot of young Nagas. And it's not just about creating pieces for selling it's about being you know self-sustainable as well you don't have to rely on others to make you know small small stuff like tables and all that you can make it on your own as well if you do learn to craft right okay. mm, so it does help yeah so coming back to the issue of the dying passion uh the thing is uh we should be more uh, open to youths pursuing these kind of uh, you know career opportunities or um, hobbies of theirs because um, in our society a lot of uh, a lot of the families a lot of the people they prefer a lot of government jobs and all that mm -hmm. thing over these type of um, what would you call it mm -hmm. manual works it may come under mm -hmm. that but the thing is that those are the things that are keeping you know the society going because mm. without furniture without all these things you can't live your life right and these are basic necessities so i think that we should have a change of our perspectives mm. and i in my first year i interviewed um ma'am jasmina and she's the owner of king concepts mm. and so they are like making a lot of bamboo crafts cane crafts and they have like sold a lot of these um crafts to mm -hmm. people abroad as well mm -hmm. and they are reaching a lot of uh, mm -hmm. people so that is an example of how you know uh, we nagas we can turn our you know craft these wood crafts into a livelihood as well and yeah, uh, the most important thing would be, you know, each each one of us supporting each other mm -hmm. in our ventures, uh, helping out wherever we can. And I guess that's how we will be able to revive this dying passion for woodcrafting. Mm -hmm. True. Because um, <clears throat> I, I, I agree, because... Dodo College offered us this uh, Naga Flockler and I was really interested to take the subject but <laughs> oh, it got filled up so the slots were full <laughs> within hours and I'm really invested in this uh, Naga cultures mm -hmm. and it's really sad it's really sad to see that like uh, we're becoming modern we're becoming westernized and leaving our authentic Naga culture behind mm -hmm. instead of bringing our culture to this modernity we're like completely ignoring our culture the authentic yeah. naga culture and implementing more on the western side because see during this hornbill and all mm -hmm. during this uh hornbill let's say hornbill the tourists or like uh, the people they come to see the the festival yeah. the hornbill festival mm -hmm. they are more invested in this authentic naga traditions yeah, yeah, for example yeah. this makalas mm -hmm. or this wooden craft or anything that is handmade by the nagas yeah. So I feel like why just wait for Hornbill when you can like turn this wood wood craftsmanship into like your livelihood, right? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like most of my um, like the people that I know that who are abroad, they are always like saying, "Can you um, find people who can do this wooden craftsman the authentic Naga mm -hmm. workshops, wooden workshops? We want to like take it abroad." Yeah. But the problem is. We don't find the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The ones we find are like the non-Nagas or it's either like uh, completely 
different from the authentic uh, Naga wooden craft. It's really, really weird. <laughs> it's so sad. Yeah, the thing is... Yeah, so the issue is that a lot of us, we migrate from our villages to settle in towns these days. And it's very evident that a lot of our youths mm -hmm. are very lacking in this traditional knowledge. And just like you said, your folklore course was instantly, you know, mm. full. So like that is, so there is that uh, issue where all of many of us don't know our uh, traditions, our heritage. But there is also hope because see, we are thirst, we're thirsty to learn about it. That's mm -hmm. why it filled up in an instant, right? Oh. Yeah. So I think that that is like the light that we can, that is the hope that we can place on ourselves as well that we have not given up yet mm -hmm. and we are still open to learning about our culture and yeah that is the positive uh, part that i see and i think that's one of the first steps that we can take to you know revive our dying passion for whether it may be our culture or you know this wooden craft or anything to do with naga um, heritage can you please uh, enlighten us about your courses, the history course that the Nagaland University provides? Sure, sure. Uh, so the thing is, um, right now, mm -hmm. with the introduction of the new education policy, mm -hmm. the, the, our juniors are taking a different course. So I'm part of the old course. We're the last of this old course. So what we've taken up is Indian history. European history and Naga history as well. Oh. Naga history has been very interesting, but since it's like new territory that we've been uh, learning, it mm. has been quite a challenge as well. Mm. We've learned about the different tribes, how Christianity came uh, into Nagaland. Mm. And also right now, what we're studying is pre-colonial um, Naga uh, polity and administration and all that. So. Mm. Yeah, there are a lot of things that we cover, and with the NEP, I, I have not much knowledge on what topics they do cover, but uh, yeah, that's most of the topics that the old course is covering. Mm. Mm, speaking of the Naga history, mm -hmm. mm, the college organized this panel discussion last year about mm -hmm. the Naga mm -hmm. repatriation, and you were a part of it, so like, can you... Uh, Please give us a glimpse about the discussion. Yeah, so uh, the Leading Together event that the college uh, organized, we had a panel discussion on Naga repatriation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was on the issue of bringing back the human remains, Naga human remains, ancestral human remains from museums abroad that were displaying mm -hmm. these um, remains. So. We had a very good discussion, very deep. and the thing is that it's a very debatable topic as well, mm -hmm. but we've been, the, the RRAD team, they've been really trying to uh, push this issue to bring these Naga ancestral human remains. But a lot, um, why this topic is debatable is that a lot of people, they gave their reasons that um, Bringing back these human remains would be against, you know, uh, the ancestors' wishes. Mm. And also there comes the issue of religion, Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because uh, our ancestors came from a time where headhunting was prevalent, right? Mm -hmm. They did not accept Christianity. They were followers of animism and, uh, you know, other things as well, nature. So, if we do bring them these ancestral remains back, we have two options of either burying them and making a memorial, mm. or displaying them in a museum, which is not mm. not the right uh, choice. But um, yeah, so and the issue that comes up is that if we do bury them and give them a Christian burial. Um, that would be that would not be the wishes of the ancestors because 
they did not follow Christianity and as headhunters I guess they were already ready to you know die by the hands of the enemies mm -hmm. and so that comes up that issue comes up uh, on how should we handle the ancestral remains if they are brought back and it's been quite some time and I guess they've made progress on what the, and made discussions as well on what to do and yeah we're hoping that there'll be a positive outcome mm -hmm. Interesting. so yeah if you do want to know more about it you can uh, visit the RAD's website and they are updating on their you know um, progress so yeah do check it out it's a really interesting topic though. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really debatable. Mm -hmm. The pros and the cons. Mm, interesting. Well, thank you very much for being here with us today. I really had an interesting conversation and a time with you and I've learned so much. See you for the next episode where we'll be talking about um, linguistic honors, the courses and the scope that one can find from the linguistic honors with our aspiring author from the Tetsu College, Terali Rebecca. So stay tuned and thank you very much.